Hey, 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 welcome back with some more tea, Dr. O. Let me tell you something. The last time, before I jump into this today, the last time we talked about the five essential mental skills of success for you as an entrepreneur. But you know what? I didn't tell you. That's why I decided to come and spill the tea today that you should be able to watch your thoughts because your thoughts, they become your words. What you say impact very powerfully what you do and what you do repeated over time, that becomes your lifestyle. But here's what they don't teach you in school. And this really is the tea that I'm gonna spill to you right now. See, in the base of your brain, just beyond executive function, is this little guy called your reticulator activating system. So let me tell you why your reticulator activating system is not just important. Your RAS is really the traffic cop of your brain. Let me think about it. If you've ever watched a movie or a show, doesn't matter, maybe you were driving by and see that very happy cop who's always directing traffic, going back and forth. That's the process of the RAS, your reticular to activating system. It serves really just two functions. Number one, it is always seeking first and foremost value, and then it's always looking for threats. Your reticulator activating system, the traffic cop of your brain, his very important job that he provides and performs for you so that it's to do to take in the information that's valuable to you or to repel the information that's a threat to your success. Now, understanding this as an entrepreneur, we are supposed to develop ourselves and our businesses. Here's what I've learned from a mentor of mine years ago. He said to me that you will never out earn your level of growth. So your RAS, now that I know that, I am always seeking value for me to grow in order for me to grow. So here's how you can actually take the value you need and repel the threats is by understanding your own process of thinking or what I call your process of thought. So in the process of thought, there's three things I want you to pay attention to. So number one, to make it powerful, you have to understand your conscious mind. Then there's a subconscious mind and that's where information is stored and it goes back and forth. But when you need anything to problem solve or conflict resolute, then enacts your creative subconscious mind. So again, your process of thought, three simple key components is understanding your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your creative subconscious. This is important because if you wanna master success and critically understand how your RAS ties in to the process of how you think, in a sense, really understand what that traffic cop does, then it's important for you to really understand how the conscious mind interprets things down to the subconscious. And if there is a problem, it creatively fixes the status quo. Now, here's the deal. As you take in information and you're filing, in your subconscious mind, think of it as a library. Everything you see, hear, or experience, or feel is filed in the subconscious mind. For example, if you have been filled with information in the past, right, that was not valuable for you to go to the next level as an entrepreneur in your business, your reticulator activating system searches for files that are available to help you get to the next level. So for example, you're watching this video and you're saying to yourself, well, self, is Dr. O really making sense? Let me give you the piece that's gonna help you. There's a third part of the mind. If you search for it, you're not gonna find it anywhere. It's called your creative subconscious mind. This is the portion in your thought process that helps keep what's called the status quo. You know, like some of the people that says, you know what, this is who I am, this is what I believe, 
and this can't happen. Those are their beliefs. In my book, Today's the Day, we talk about it in chapter four. You guys can get the book, you can read it and go a little deeper with that. But essentially, here's what it's saying. You get to keep what you believe. So if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them too, right? But it's important if you're looking for value inside your subconscious mind, in that library is where your habits are filed and kept. It's where your attitude is filed and kept. Now, an attitude or the best way is the direction to which you're leaning to the most. Say, to use your imagination for a moment with me, you stretch out your arms, imagine it just like an airplane. When the airplane is leaning to the left, for pilots, that's called an attitude, right? In aviation, it's the best way to do it. So you're either leaning positive or negative, and when it's leveled up, it's a perfect attitude. Right? Not altitude, but we do know that your attitude determines your altitude. Right? So here's the thing. To understand how to improve your habits or change them, you have to be able to see the information or see the goal, see the opportunity, see the thing you want. Remember that brain as a GPS, your RAS is always trying to find the ways to go in. And in your subconscious mind, because of your habits, you store everything you have here is truth. And if that truth has been keeping you from going to the next level, you need new truth. And that I'm gonna tell you about when we spill another cup of tea.